Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and after I had finished Crime and Punishment, I, I found myself uh, quite uncertain um, to what I wanted to read next. I, I just had no idea and no plans, especially after finishing uh, after finishing Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky being just such a tough act to follow. Um, it's a thrilling uh, reading experience. And also some of my reservation is because it's the end of the year and I feel like I want to be reading something um, either great or uh, familiar. And um, it took me a little bit. I started reading um, Death on Credit or Death on the Installment Plan by Celine. It's the cover that I have. It's um, well-worn. Um, in my 20s, um, I loved Celine. I, I just thought uh, the anger and passion and energy um, in uh, Journey to the End of the Night and Death on the Installment Plan was just a reading experience that was unlike anything I had come across um, at that time. And uh, it was vulgar and uh, uh, dark and grotesque and, and, and graphic. And um, in, in my 20s, I've, I spent a lot of time reading uh, Celine and his, his other works. Um, Death on the Installment Plan has um, remained my favorite. Um, Journey to the End of the Night and Death on the Installment Plan are the the, the two milestone uh, novels by Celine. Journey to the End of the Night was um, his first novel, Big Splash. Um, Death on the Installment Plan was a, a sort of a sequel, and all of his novels, uh, I think the term today is autofiction. It's um, highly autobiographical. The fictional elements um, may or may not be there. It's um, this consistent narrator, Death, um, Death on the Installment Plan. We have this... Uh, narrator who's lived um, a really hard life um, difficulties and misories and um, tragedies just uh, piled one on top of the other um, go going through world, world wars and uh, famine and uh, poverty and a whole, whole string of atrocities. And we, we follow the life of this uh, doctor, writer, misanthrope, cynic. Um, and in Death in, the, Death in the Installment Plan, there's a, a chaotic sense of storytelling. We, we have uh, sort of a, a present-day narrative that keeps uh, dipping in, falling into the past, and eventually um, in, a, in a rocky, hallucinatory way, because we're bouncing around so much, but we, we finally land into um, the story of the, the, the um, childhood life of this narrator who has gone through so much that we've seen in um, uh, A Journey to the End of the Night. Um, <laughs> he's the, the ranting and raving and constant stream of um, heavy, hard, extreme um, op op opinions. The, the, the novel feels like somebody is ranting and raving and screaming and bellowing at you uh, co constantly uh, to the point where it becomes uh, dark humor. Uh, th there's parts that are um, extremely um, 
comedic. It's also incredibly d d depressing when we learn about uh, <clears throat> the the life of this child just being um, sort of a third wheel of a family. Um, that the family, uh, the mother and father, are um, largely unlikable. It's an abusive household. The father is um, beating his wife and beating the child and um, they're just scraping by and trying to work as much as they can and um, they're a disreputable family. The, um, um, the neighborhood, the community around them largely looks down on them so they feel uh, isolated and, and in this uh, uh, perpetual state of uh, a hostile condition. And I started reading, um, started reading this book uh, a day or two ago or something. And um, like I said, I had this uh, sort of limelight, um, golden remembrance of how much I enjoyed the book um, in my early 20s. And there, there are a few um, key episodes that have been quite memorable um, moments in the book that I remember having to put the book down because I was either roaring or crying with laughter, having to take my eyeglasses off and go, this is just so bleak and absurd and grotesquely humorous. The, the, the comedy is so well uh, earned. And I got to page, uh, I got past page 76, but uh, I hit page 76 in, in this edition and um, finally came to um, one of those episodes that I remembered so that, that I still remember so vividly from what I, from when I had um, read this book uh, maybe uh, 12 or 15 years ago, my, sometime in my early 20s. And so we, we have this family, they, they've been, they're constantly moving around, they have this uh, nomadic lifestyle going from hovel to hovel and ha having these uh, small failed businesses. Right now they have this antique store just full of junk that they're tr trying to sell. Uh, they're not they're not um, criminals or cheats or anything like that. But it's just this stuff that they have that they're they're trying to um, pa pass on and make make ends meet. Um, so they have, they have a little uh, shop on the street and. Very quickly, the father figure gets into an argument with uh, a neighboring shopkeeper. There's um, dogs that are uh, going to the bathroom on the uh, front walls of the shop and on the on the sidewalks. And um, this argument goes between the, the our family and the shopkeeper and uh, the neighborhood. Takes the, takes the side of the neighboring shopkeeper. The, the resulting aftermath, uh, at the time that I was reading it, uh, was, was so grotesque and uh, wild. Uh, there's a period of the day when uh, everybody goes out and walks the dogs. And <laughs> they band together, the, the, the neighborhood bands together to have all of the dogs of the neighborhood uh, relieve themselves, defecate um, right at this one particular shop, the father's shop. <laughs> so every, every morning, a stream of days are going by, and every morning now, uh, the father, who is this uh, wrathful, raging, um, in, intense man constantly bellowing and screaming and hurling out insults and beating his wife and beating his child and um, this um, 
kind of puffed up, swirling man of the house is reduced to each morning having to leave extra early to go um, to the front of the shop so he can clean up all, all of the feces is on his hands and knees and crowd gathers people are looking outside of their windows making bets about uh, the turds that he's picking up and uh, I'll read a little bit uh, let me see this is 76 page page 76 um, and let's see this is 77 uh, there was no lack of turds on the sidewalk outside our door with all the people who passed there was so much spit it made the pavement sticky he cleaned it all up and not a peep out of him that was such a re revolution in his habits that my mother began to watch him when he locked himself up in his room he'd stay there for hours he neglected his deliveries he gave up drawing she'd look in through the keyhole he'd pick it up uh he turned the cylinder <laughs> the, the father is each night coming home with a loaded gun locks himself in a room and he's shooting and the family is screaming and in misery and terror um let's see Uh, 75. He'd come out with his pail, his broom, his rag, and the little trowel. He'd slip under the turds to pick them up and throw them in into the sawdust. What a humiliation for a man with his education. The turds increased in number, and there were so many more in front of our shop lengthwise and crosswise than anywhere else. Obviously a plot. <clears throat> uh, Mademoiselle... Mehan, uh, the, the neighboring arguing shopkeeper, was at her second floor window grinning from ear to ear as she watched my father battling the shit. It gave her a kick that lasted all day. The neighbors collected to count the turds. Bets were laid out that he wouldn't be able to clean it all up. He'd make it fast, then rush in to put on his collar and tie. <laughs> I know I'm laughing now. Uh, the scatological humor that uh, just amused and tickled me so much in my 20s um, has obviously uh, worn itself thin. Uh, I, I still love Celine, uh, especially um, when I think about whatever part he played in my reading life. But um, I've read about 100 pages, and it's either that, that I've grown out of um, whatever appreciation that I had for Celine, or it could be that it's just not um, working on me that, at, at this moment. Um, but I, I, th I don't tend, I don't imagine, uh, as I'm speaking right now, that I'm going to finish the book. Uh, I know how it goes along. I know there's a couple other episodes. Um, there's one uh, absolute, um, in, absolutely insane scene that I, that I wouldn't even make a video to talk about because it's um, horrific. But uh, th there are a couple other episodes that come up that I, that I know are uh, great. But largely, uh, Celine's novels... The two that I keep talking about, Journey to the End of the Night, Death on the Installment Plan, they are the best. If anyone's interested in reading Celine, um, start with Journey, and if you like it, then you have another great book. The, the, re the rest of them aren't, aren't um, um, really worth reading unless you want to be a Celine completist. But you have this high pitch, and... Uh, the story goes on, things happen, and everything is just sort of sustained um, at one level. We're just kind of barreling through a story. So th the, these are not novels in the sense that um, 
you're swelling up to something, there's going to be a, a climax, a payoff, a denouement, a conclusion. Um, at, at the end of, what is this, short of 600 pages, you could just well imagine that um, he's carrying on a after the page count ends. Uh, there's nothing particularly, uh, there's no big pay off when you finish the book. It's, it's just the, the rantings of someone buddy's miserable life. Um, so that was, I'll say page 76. I read a little bit of 75, 77, but um, a little bit of death on the installment plan. Uh, one particular episode in the book uh, that I thought I would share. If, you, if you've read the book, uh, please let me know. Uh, it, to me, it really, looking back, it does feel like um, the author for young men, um, men in their 20s, that would get a kick out of it, find find humor out of it. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I, I don't know. Um, so, um, Death on the Installment Plan by Celine. Let me know if you've... Uh, read it. Um, so please leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching, and take care.